Welcome to Duluth Junction Workshop. I'm Tyler. In my quest to get my 62 Ford F600 legally roadworthy this year, I've begun work on the brake system. Although this truck came with a relatively normal four-wheel drum setup, the heart of it is something you don't see anymore. Let's look at the birth, life, and death of the Hydrovac style brake booster. Even though production hydraulic brakes were first seen on 1921 Duesenbergs, they really only displaced mechanical cable and linkage systems by the mid-1930s. From 1938, Ford's car advertisements transitioned from the safety of steel from pedal to wheel into big powerful hydraulic brakes in 1939. The era of hydraulic brakes was here to stay, and with it came the ability to not only stop cars faster with manual brake systems, but to increase the fluid pressure for heavier commercial vehicles. In the early 1940s, engineers developed a way to utilize engine vacuum, that is the negative pressure created as the pistons suck air into the engine, to greatly increase the braking performance of cars and trucks. Called Hydrovac, this system works differently than modern brake boosters, and was commonly used in everything from passenger cars to heavy-duty trucks for decades. While it may look like a standard booster setup, the Hydrovac is actually mounted remotely. Mine is mounted on the frame under the driver's side of the cab. Instead of the brake pedal directly pushing on a valve in the booster, this system uses a master cylinder to push brake fluid through the brake line to the remotely mounted Hydrovac unit. The Hydrovac then sends highly pressurized brake fluid out to the wheel cylinders. For the mechanically inclined, here's a more detailed explanation of the magic that makes this work. The Hydrovac is made up of three major components. The control valve, which is operated by a slave cylinder, the diaphragm, and the piston. It also has two sources of air, an atmospheric air intake and a vacuum line which is hooked up to the intake manifold. In its resting state, the control valve is held shut by its spring. This allows the engine vacuum to occupy both sides of the diaphragm, which is held away from the body by a large spring right in here. As the brake pedal is depressed, fluid is forced from the master cylinder to the slave cylinder, pushing the control valve open. This brings atmospheric pressure to the far side of the diaphragm, where it overpowers the vacuum side and spring, depressing the piston. The piston, in turn, acts as a sort of master cylinder, pushing higher pressure boosted brake fluid to the wheels and stopping the truck. Once the brake has been applied, the driver does not need to keep the full pressure on the brake pedal. The control valve will maintain appropriate pressure to hold the truck in place until the pedal is fully released. If the booster components fail, the Hydrovac enters a fail-safe mode in which the brake fluid can still pass through the piston and to the wheels, but with manual brakes only. In sensitive applications such as school buses, a pair of Hydrovac units was used in conjunction with a large vacuum canister. This way, the vehicle would maintain safe braking performance even if one Hydrovac were to fail completely. While this is quite the complex unit, it was optional in some light duty pickups, standard on most medium duty trucks, and used in heavy duties when air brakes were not specified from the 1940s through the 1970s. As such, these units can often still be rebuilt and serviced. I brought mine to Brake and Equipment Warehouse in Minneapolis, who sent it out to be restored. If you have one that needs to be redone, call around to Brake specialist companies for rebuild kits or restoration services. So why aren't these units still used today? A 1978 Chevrolet medium brochure gives us some hints, and the biggest one seems to be forced induction. While the C50 at the time used a gas V8, the C60 and C70 models were available with a Detroit 453T turbo diesel engine. Since turbochargers force positive pressure into the intake manifold, there's no vacuum pressure available to operate vacuum accessories of any kind. Trucks from this era onward often used hydro boost systems, which run off the power steering pump instead. Hydro boost systems are more powerful, easier to package, and offer enough reserve pressure to stop the truck with remaining boost if the system fails. Hydro boost systems are still commonly used on light and medium duty trucks, as well as some heavy duties. I think Hydrovac systems are a cool piece of trucking history, and I look forward to testing mine out after I rebuild the rest of the system this year. I hope you found this interesting too. Thanks for watching and press on. You can find source documentation in the description. The Hydrovac is actually mounted remotely. Mine is mounted on the frame of the driver's side of the cab. While it may look like a standard booster setup, the Hydrovac is actually mounted remotely. Mine is mounted on the frame of the driver's side of the cab. This system uses a master cylinder to push brake fluid through the brake line to the remotely mounted Hydrovac.